Thank you. Is this high enough? Yeah, sounds good. Uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Jonny, and uh, <clears throat> this is my first website. I created it in uh, 98. It was about like Legend of Zelda, Monkey Island, game sheets, and uh, illegal gaming music for download. Uh, so uh, a couple of years after I created this, uh, this site, I kind of realized that I need to meet uh, people that is better than me at programming and can teach me a lot of stuff. So that's when I joined Stockholm JS. Uh, that was quite a lot of years later, actually, but still. <laughs> and then somewhere uh, like three years ago, uh, I, I started organizing Nordic JS together with Johannes and my colleague Martina. And uh, we also do a company called Confetti, which is kind of like an event site builder. Um, and I also do some open source projects. This was ListJS. It was the first open source project I did. And it was quite su successful. And this is maybe what I will present today is my second real open source project. So I feel I really have the pressure because it was so random that this got <laughs> famous. So <coughs> I feel the pressure now. Uh, but if you want to, speaking of GitHub, if you want to uh, edit my, my website, it's uh, on GitHub. Uh, it's not the entire site since the music, etc., are illegal, <laughs> but, uh, but still. And if you want to follow me somewhere, uh, check out my Twitter because uh, that's how I get my self esteem. Uh, please. And this is a picture of me and my friend Oscar when we built our first treehouse. Tree house. And I want to show this picture because I feel that this project is kind of like this treehouse. It's a pretty epic building, uh, but it's not really, you know, fuck man, I mess it bicked. <laughs> it could need a couple of improvements, and that's, it's the same thing with, with what I'm going to present today. So uh, I would love to have your feedback afterwards for updates and changes, etc. Uh, anyways. So what I'm going to present today is a simple tool for your everyday animations. And you could also say that I'm going to unite the states of your app. So the natural name of this project is United States, <laughs> or USJS for, for short. And uh, as our friend Donald would say, uh, USJS will improve your animation workflow bigly. And I don't mean that in a braggadocious way. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, enough pictures on, on Donald, and I'm going to show you an example. Uh, I think I'm going to view this full screen. So, first of all, how many of you in here have had this? Uh, challenge. You have like a button, button or something, and if you click that button, you want to show a DOM element, or you want to hide it. How many have done that? Yeah? Good? Some of you? <coughs> a lot of you? But the thing is that you can, it, this feels like a very easy problem from the beginning. Uh, so if I just increase this. Uh, That. So, <clears throat> uh, can you see it? Yeah. I think that the silence means yes. Uh, so here we have a button, and here we have a box. And when I click the button, I want to show the content of the box. It's quite simple, right? But the the first way we we the first like. One way of doing it, the first version you would think of is probably something like this. So if the, we have here the, the button and we have the box, and if we click the button, uh, if the box has display none, then we want to add display block, right? Uh, so if I just save that, I reload this page, and I click here, boom. We have a box. We click it again, we hide it. But there's a problem here, right? It's quite ugly when it just pops up in the view. Uh, so we would like to have some kind of nice 
uh, opacity animation for that, for example. So since I'm like kind of like this TV chef, so I prepared this code since I'm not that good at coding yet. Uh, so I have this instead. So if the box has opacity zero, please set opacity one. And we also have some uh, CSS for this one. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I want to have a nice transition, so we add transition here. And we want the default state to be opacity zero. So if I save this, I reload my example, I have a nice smooth transition, right? So what happens if we would like to have uh, if we would like to have a cute puppy beside Donald because we want to have some nice things on our website? <laughs> <coughs> so you see, we get a problem right away because the opacity it still takes up the same space that it would have, yeah, as it would have done even if it was visible. So we need to change it. Uh, so instead of just handling the opacity, we would do like this. We would first, if it is on display none, we would set display block and we would change the opacity at the same time. And um, yeah, like this. And then when we close it, we just set the opacity to zero and we wait 300 <coughs> milliseconds and we hide it with display none. So if I just uh, reload this, we have something like this, right? Looks, looks better, but it still doesn't look good. So uh, then we continue down here. And now we, <coughs> we change the display block and then yeah, we do the same thing as before, but we also animate on height. So we, have, we set height zero and then we have height uh, 405 or something that we want to animate to, uh, which we can, and if you do this, what? All oh, right. Oh, thank you. Perfect. The, the TV chefs doesn't have this. <laughs> I'm a bit lucky. Um, <laughs> so let's try it again. Wow, now it looks good, right? So now it comes these uh, mobile people that you know resize the screen and stuff, so it breaks naturally. So then someone says that, yeah, but we can use offset height to uh, calibrate the height uh, on uh, when you need it. Let's do that like this. Uh, we try it again. What? No, it doesn't work because you can't you can't read the height of something that has to display none, right? So then we need to move on to the next solution for this super simple problem: hiding and showing a div. And now we're starting to get a lot of code here. I can't even fit it on the screen. And you remember what the original problem was: hiding and showing Donald. Uh, so now we can use use a solution like this. We can set position absolute, we can move the element outside of the screen, and then we can measure the height, put it to display none again, we can move it back onto the screen, and then show it. Right, super good solution. So I try that one. Okay. Now we have a huge box here. What did just happen? Someone can guess? No? All right. Uh, the thing is that when you move something, we, we, if you set an element to the uh, position absolute, uh, it like, moves out of its container. Like It doesn't care about the width anymore. And since this picture of Donald is really, really big, it measures the full height of the picture. Yeah. <laughs> but. But, but my point being, I, I won't continue with this example, but because my point being that this seems very simple, but it really isn't. So now it's time for the fast and quick solution, because there are only easy fixes, right? We have learned that from Donald. No? No? 
Uh, so first we just remove this transition thing. So now we, we, the only thing we have now is that Donald has display none. And uh, what I've done now is that I include, I've included uh, USJS down here. And uh, uh, then I write US toggle box. And we try it again. Boom. <laughs> so, so this is this is kind of like the most basic usage of yeah. An applause, nice. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. I managed to hide and show a div. Uh, it's quite impressive, right? <clears throat> no, but so that that is the simplest version of how to use uh, USJS. It's you could hide and show elements, but that isn't fun enough, right? So we can also uh, we could also do things like this. So if I put back this code that checks if the, the div or the box is visible or not, I can say that uh, when you show US show the box and it should take 500 milliseconds and we should use the, the easing method out back. And when we hide it, we want to use a style that I call slide. It should take 400 milliseconds and it should use this easing instead. So if I save it, I try it again, we get something like this. And um, if I could, yeah, I will just continue showing these basic examples. And if you have any questions, please just shout. Uh, here I have another example. Uh, I used the toggle function again, but now I have <coughs> a style that is called flip2, which I've, I actually defined myself. This isn't included in the US JS uh, standard I don't know, style library, so to speak. So we have this, uh, flip2. And now we can also see how this, like the transitions are defined. So I try to mimic the way CSS animations work. So as you can see here, I have one here is options for when I show an element, and here are the options for when I hide an element. So as you can see here, when I want to show something, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this style, I have opacity zero, I move to opacity one, and I also have kind of like 100 deg degrees minus, negative, on the x-axis. Uh, and the same thing on the for the hide element. So if I just save this and try it again, it looks it looks like this. Quite neat, right? And I could, I also have one more example here with uh, d -d 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 something I called fade three three. And you see that down here, and it's just. Yeah, it's just some other styles. It is mostly just to showcase how it could look if you use it. Uh, so, something like this. All right, uh, with that said, I just want to remind you that this is how it looks right now. This was how the bad solution, the last bad solution that I showed you before it looked. So, I know that a lot of developers like when, when you don't have a lot of code. So, this is. Uh, I think this is a pretty good example. Uh, and to go back to the presentation here, whoops, I think, oh, let's see where, yeah. No. The full API of the United States looks like this. You can show things, you can hide things, you can toggle between hide and show. You can, <clears throat> you can add your own styles. There are some included, but you can also add your own. And I, I have this USA method, which, which I mostly, that is kind of like the animation method. So I don't know if it should be public, but it's, the name is so nice, so I had to make it public. <laughs> it will be hard to use, but yeah. Um, and I also have this slide two method that I will explain uh, in a couple of minutes. And to use it, you can uh, you can use it like this. You have first uh, the element you want to, and we have the same API both for the show, hide, and toggle. So if you want to 
show something, you have this the element here. Uh, you can choose the duration, the easing, the style. You can also choose uh, a delay, and maybe something more. Yeah. And you can also, if you put it here in the, like the, yeah, if you put it here, it's for both the hide and show. But you can also define that on, for show, I want to have this specific style. And this is mostly if you use the toggle version. You can like define something for hide and something for show. And you can also define these options by, uh, by adding these data elements, uh, data attributes to the DOM elements. So you can uh, choose between the duration, easing, delay, and style. And as you see, if you, you can add hide or show in the middle if you like to. If you don't, it goes for both the hide and show. And yeah, I explained this uh, before. And this is something that isn't there yet, but that I would like to add, is that in the same manner as we have the CSS animations, I would like you to be able to control the animation all through the entire, like, yeah. I want to, you, you to be able to control like the easing function as well. And <laughs> before I continue, I would like to have your help. <laughs> because, I mean, since this is called United States, I'm kind of like, I want, to, I want the library to be a bit more like America. So if you could, like, during my presentation, send a tweet with uh, the hashtag Stockholm.js with suggestions of what I would call the, I, I want to make like aliases to the original methods that we have in the library. So for example, show could be alley, and hide could be nuke, and tra uh, toggle could be trade. So I would like to have your help on this, please. Yeah, so moving on to slide two, and this is when it gets a bit more interesting. Because slide two <coughs> is for toggling between two different, two different DOM elements or like switching between different states in your app. And to, you, to do that, uh, we can do something like, like this. Uh, with, the, with the show, hide, and toggle, you don't have to, you just need a DOM element. It doesn't care about anything else. But if you want to use the slide to, you need to have a container. And if you use the slide to method, it looks, uh, it looks like this. You, for example, if I want to show uh, this, uh, this DOM element, I fetch it like this, and then I write slide to edit. And what it does then is that it checks like, yeah, this is, this is edit. Uh, what is the container of edit? It is this div. And then it hides all the other children of that DOM element. And you can use the slide to method in uh, more ways than one, because this is this is the first one. This doesn't require any additional markup on it or anything, but you could also do like this. Now we introduce some new data attributes. So we have uh, data US name, and this is a way to name the different states that you want to like slide between. Uh, and what you do then is that you can also choose now to just get the container that you want to slide within. And then you can say, uh, slide to the edit state of user and use these options. And the options are the same as they were on like the toggle, show, and hide um, methods. Or you could do like this. And now we introduce a third, or like one more uh, data attribute, namely data US. And this is a way to name the container. So uh, we can also, here we, we say that we want to slide to the edit, edit state of the container user. Uh, and it continues. <laughs> you could also use, I have like built in uh, kind of like listeners into the library as well. So you can do like this. If you have a, for example, a button within a US, this, this is US container, and then we have a button within it, and we say that data US slide to edit, 
then it will try to find the, the, the closest, like the, the closest container, which is an ancestor, which is in this case user. And then it checks like, are there any edit states within uh, this container? Yes, it is. Then it will show that one. Example of this as well. So, in this second example, we have uh, a couple of users. We have three users. Here is one. Uh, I think I will fix this a bit. Here is two. And here is three. And they look the same. It's just, they have just different names. And for this example, I don't have a, a JavaScript file except for the United States JavaScript file, the USJS file. Um, and as, as the, the previous example that I showed you, or like the, the Sevdo code for this slide two uh, method, we can see here we have this data user, which means that the user is a container. And this container, the default style for switching between different states within this container should be flip. Uh, do you see it up here? Um, and in this user container, we have the state uh, view. We have the state view, and we have the state edit. And we also have, within this view state, we have a button that is called uh, edit, and it contains like a pen symbol. And the important thing here is that it's called, uh, we have the attribute data us slide to edit. And within the edit one, we have uh, slide to view. And the only difference between these different users is that for the first one, I have style flip. For the second one, I have style slide. And for the third one, we have style zoom. So these are three of the styles that are in currently included in the US, in the distributed version of, um, uh, of US. So if we look at this in action, we should just get away from Donald and get something like this. So remember the first one, it has style flip, and boom, we have a flip. The second one, we have the slide, and the third one, we have the zoom. So this is the slide method uh, in action. So you toggle between two different DOM elements. And I should also mention that I don't have like any specific CSS uh, behind this. I mean, it's everything is included in the JavaScript, so you don't really have to care about how, I mean, US, USJS doesn't really care about how your CSS is looking. The only thing you can do is to decide if you wanna want the container to be have overflow hidden or overflow uh, visible, depending on your different use cases. And if I go back to the uh, the presentation here. How does it work? I started a bit early. But <laughs> the way it works is everything is handled with JavaScript. There are no like CSS classes that it switches between. Everything is made in JavaScript. So what I've done is that I created my own kind of like animation loop. So it uses request animation frame. Uh, for all the animations, and what I do is that I actually update the style attribute of the different elements a lot of time each second. My first duration was with with classes, but then after some feedback from Johannes, uh, uh, I actually switched to the um, the do-it-yourself version, and it was much nicer because the CSS classes got uh, very complicated uh, after a while.
And this is also, I have much more control of over whatever I want to do now. For example, with these different easing functions. Uh, CSS, as you know, they have a couple included ones, but they don't have the cool ones yet. So that was also one thing that I wanted to, wanted to add. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, if you have any specific questions, we can either take them now or we can take them a bit afterwards. So how is the browser support for this? It's, uh, I think it should be pretty good. I haven't tested it <laughs> in so many other browsers. But the thing is, I don't do anything weird. I mean, my idea is to, if you have an older browser that, that doesn't really support this, uh, um, I don't know, translate or this CSS3 attributes, I will just fade between like the, the basic Donald example when you have like we animate the height and then we animate the opacity. So it's it's very like it won't be hard to make it work in you know all browsers. And if that would work bad due to like performance reasons, I could just have the display none display block display display none. Because if you're using a that old browser, I don't think think you really care about the fancy animation between different states, I think. And what about the hipster frameworks? Uh, this is, of course, important for me as well. Uh, <laughs> it, it should work uh, with, with most of them as well. Because one of the, the core principles that I've, uh, that I've had when I created this is that the United States shouldn't, for one, like, interfere. I mean, they like to interfere. But in this case, it shouldn't really assume anything about your code. And if, like, it doesn't keep track of your elements or anything. So if you have, like, if you update your DOM structure with, with React or Ember or whatever you're using, I mean, United States doesn't really care. It just checks when you, when you call a United States method. It checks, like, okay, uh, where is the element? Here is the element. Okay, how big is it? Uh, let's, for, like, the, the hide, show, and toggle, it just it adds a container around the, it wraps the, the element within a container, does the animation work, and then it removes the, the container. So the idea is that you shouldn't, you sh should kind of like not see that United States have been there. Kind of. The only thing is that it leaves like display <coughs> block and display none, depending on if you want to show or hide the, the different elements. What about tests? Uh, well, there are tests. <laughs> Uh, at least, uh, I don't know, 50 of them s so far. And I, th I think that, that covers, covers most of it at the moment. Um, and uh, how about the release? So when is this released? Because it isn't really released yet. But I actually put it on GitHub like yesterday. So now it's OK if my computer dies. <laughs> it's still on the internet. That's good. Uh, but, but I'm planning the only thing that it stands between now and a release is actually a website. So I think that I think that it's it's good enough for like a beta release. So I hope to do that as as soon as possible. I also have a couple of features that I would like to add, but I like the CSS version that I saw that you can control the easing flow. I would like to add that as well, but I don't know um, I don't know if I will do that. It depends on how long time it would take for me to like get back all this university mathematics knowledge that I <coughs> actually had once, once a couple of years ago, or long, many years ago. Um, so, yeah, a website. So I hope to release it pretty soon. And you can right now go out and try it out. Uh, there are no documentations, <laughs> <laughs> but I plan to put these examples that I've used today on the GitHub page, so you can find them there and try to figure out how it works. Uh, so some learnings. I think that uh, the first learning is, of course, very obvious, but I want to say it anyways. It's to solve your own problems. This, the way I got the idea of building this wasn't that I thought that, yeah, I want to build something that's called United States just because it's cool, even though that could be the reason. But the reason was that, I mean, in Confetti, which we are working with every day, I mean, we have so many places where we just want to like hide and show different elements, or we want to toggle between, um, yeah, between edit and view states of 
different part of our, our app. And, and we made our own kind of like Ember component for handling this. But it was a lot of bugs and shit. So <laughs> I thought that if we have so much problems with just this super simple, uh, super simple thing, more people are probably having the same problems as we have. And the second and maybe more important <laughs> learning is to sign up for a presentation or a talk uh, like this one. Because I actually had kind of like a, a version of this presentation at, in Uppsala, at Uppsala JS kind of like two or three weeks ago. And <laughs> it was so interesting because when they contacted me, it was like, yeah, do you want to have a presentation about something? And I was like, I don't know. And I was like, please. And I was like, OK, I will present my new open source project, which I wasn't finished with. <laughs> so <laughs> this was a perfect way to push myself to complete the project. Because I guess all of you in here have some kind of project that you have started building and you haven't completed it. <laughs> so, and and uh, it's it's uh, signing up for presentation is a really good way to put a good deadline on, on yourself, which you don't you won't have a boss that like pushes you to it. You just you just have to do it for both for yourself and for the people that you know you will present for. And I also want to say this as the as one of the organizers of Stockholm JS, it's that we want to have more people on, the, on this stage as well. Because, I mean, Stockholm JS is a perfect way for you to showcase your, I mean, your libraries or whatever things you're building. And it doesn't have to be like, it could be a presentation like this, so the, the one we saw before me, but it could also be a much shorter one. You can just present like five minutes. I mean, we, if, you wanna, if you have something small that you want to show, just, just send us an email and, or go to our website and sign up for, for a talk. We have a link there. Uh, just go there and sign up. And we, we really encourage people that are not experienced speakers because, I mean, if you're going to start somewhere, I mean, this is the place where you should start. This is the place you should have your first presentation on. So, yeah, sign, start your own project, then sign up for a talk, and then you have to deliver it. So that, that is my best lesson from this. Um, and I also want to say that, I want to end with that I al already have my first pull request uh, from, hi, my name is Jonas. <laughs> this, I put it up, up on GitHub, and just like a couple of hours later, I got this. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a good start. <laughs> uh, I, I really appreciate it. I would never have be, been able to do this without. Hi, my name is Jonas. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> and this is, this is the URL of uh, the website right now. But before you write it down, <laughs> I'll put this URL up. Because I would really, really, really appreciate if you go to this URL. And at this URL, you will find a super short uh, feedback form, like four questions, and all of them are optional. And I would really appreciate if some of you would like to answer that. And it's about like how do you like this presentation. And you will also, at this link, you will find the link to the United States website. And there you will also find uh, the GitHub, um, yeah, the GitHub link. So, yeah. any questions? We have a cool catch box here, so I really encourage everyone to use it. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> uh, so I was looking through the source while you were talking, and um, you have this one module that actually has the wrap and unwrap functions, the dom.js inside of your utilities, right? And there you're taking a random element and you're wrapping it around a different element, which is the one that you will be uh, using for you know, adding your styles, which, uh, I mean, down the line you just call element.style and that's a hash and you access the property and just set a value there. But my question is, how are you thinking of integrating that with the reference that some frameworks keep of the elements in the virtual DOM, which is just a DOM in memory? We will see. I don't know. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I don't, I don't really know. Because I'm, uh, yeah, I haven't used React myself so much. I just tried some examples, for example. So uh, I don't really know. If that would be a problem, I will try to figure out a way to handle that. All right. Uh, I, I, yeah. 
So I actually don't know at the moment. But because I was thinking that since we're doing the animation, then, then we put back the element right where it was. Well, in my head, it sounds like any state update that will re-trigger a rendering by the reconciliation algorithm from React will just fuck with everything you've done with USJS. If but I might be wrong. I don't know. But I guess if you are updating, yeah, if you are updating the specific element that United States is updating on right, or animating on right, right then. But yeah, that that could be a problem. But it also, yeah, depending on if you are actually wanna if you wanna update the element that you also wanna try to animate at the same time. I'm not. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I said you might need a React wrapper that just handles that you don't won't re-render anything that you are animating. Uh -huh. It's a React component for for um, using the US JS. US React. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> US Re that, that's a good name. <laughs> yeah, but but I, but I, I also plan to add some kind of. I mean, since I mean we are using Ember for example, and I mean. Uh, we would probably like to have some kind of component for encapsulating um, the USJS um, code for, for example. So I think that it could be the same f for React as well. So I, yeah, I have thought about like putting it into just wrappers for the different libraries. But I, I didn't know about the specifics of React in that sense. So that's a really good, uh, good feedback.